BlackRock is giving you seven days. Hello, beautiful people. Shalom, money makers. In the next few weeks, the crypto market is about to change forever. Is it going to change for the better or for worse? We're going to try to talk about that and get to a, a reasonable conclusion. Plus, Michael Saylor continues to double down on his Bitcoin position and in mysterious whale just bought 1.6 billion 1.2 sorry <laughs> 1.2 billion dollars it's, it's a big difference 1.2 and 1.6 it's a 400 million dollar difference <laughs> of bitcoin today what's going on with that all i ask is that you give me a beautiful smile smash that like button and let's get straight into it so if we take a look at the crypto market you can see that bitcoin is now at 43,000. we have ethereum popping today 5.29% to 2,348. Some of the assets that have been cooking the past few weeks, like AVAX and Solana, are down today. Uh, but in general, the crypto market is up 1.85%. Uh, Bitcoin dominance is down a little bit. Interesting. Could be because Ethereum is rising. So there's a little bit of a difference there, right? It's, it's more than... Uh, it's about five times um, more movement for Ethereum today. So that's maybe why the dominance itself is going down. Um, but very interesting scenario. Now, we know, right, uh, that the crypto market is looking forward to the potential of BlackRock getting their Bitcoin ETF approved. We know that, we, ha we don't know actually until now if BlackRock has, has already accumulated Bitcoin, right? But what we do know is that they are going to do this according to a, um, a message that went over the Bloomberg terminal saying that BlackRock is expected to buy another 10 million worth of Bitcoin on January 3rd, 2024, right? Um, now, we don't know what the potential price of Bitcoin will be by then, but this is an interesting scenario. We can think that BlackRock has already been accumulating, and not just BlackRock, but the others have been accumulating Bitcoin prior to the potential approval of, of the Bitcoin ETFs uh, by January 10th, because if not, then they're risking the fact that they could uh, have a, an explosion in the price of Bitcoin, and by the time they get the approval, the price will be a lot higher, right? Uh, for example, if they weren't buying at 25,000 or at this area, 25,000, 27,000 back a few months ago, uh, you know, this was when the, the announcement came out, right? So it ran up all the way to 30 and fell down back to 25. They didn't buy in this area, so now it's almost double uh, the price, right? 25 would be 50 would be double, but it's almost 100%. How much is it uh, from, let's say, the low here, 25 uh, till now? 72%. So it will cost them 72% more to accumulate that Bitcoin for their ETF. So I think that what they did is they either they had a partnership or an agreement with somebody, some crypto uh, uh, algo firm or something like that to accumulate for them um, the assets. And then when they get it approved, then they transfer it to them uh, at a value price where, where they bought it. I think that's what they probably did. Uh, because if if they had, you know, their own wallets or something that was marked BlackRock, everybody would know. And then they, everybody would think that for 100% sure that, you know, it's going to get approved. Uh, it, it seems that it's going to get approved, right? Uh, we're seeing the courts, uh, the U.S. courts. Um, putting pressure on the SEC to approve and all the, you know, the actions by the SEC, the fact that they keep coming back and giving them options and telling them, hey, change this, change that, that brings high probability that we're going to see these uh, Bitcoin ETFs get approved. We also saw today Michael Saylor Micro of MicroStrategy Just bought another 14,620 Bitcoin for 615 million. He's also up, I think it I read today, around $2 billion on the position. Um, so this just tells you, you know, he keeps dollar costing average. He buys when it dips. He buys when it goes up. He's always buying, right? Uh, he says, I'll probably buy the top as well, right? He, he doesn't care basically what the price is. If they have money, they're buying Bitcoin. <laughs> Uh, and, and, you know, that's a strategy. It's not a strategy for everybody, but it is a strategy. The question is, will they ever sell? That's interesting, right? Uh, what's their strategy for selling? If there's no strategy at all, right, they're never going to sell. Are they diamond handing Bitcoin? Could be, right? Uh, it seems so, but, you know, maybe they have a plan and they're not telling anybody. 
And also we saw a massive whale accumulating 1.2 billion in a few transactions here today uh, of Bitcoin. So very, very interesting. We're seeing this accumulation. I had the theory that we'd see that pull. We saw a pullback and then we're going to see a consolidation or kangaroo-ish or uh, movement, however you want to call it, for the next few weeks, next few days, sorry, going into January 1st. And then when we start getting very close to January 10th, as it starts coming, as the January 3rd uh, dates that we had here starts coming, I think we'll start seeing accumulation. What the whales, what the short sellers usually do is they create fear like they did two days ago where the market fell. They start accumulating uh, uh, when there's major fear and then they start creating FOMO, FOMO, FOMO and they sell when the news comes out. So when as soon as the news comes out, uh, I think we're going to see a little bit of a, a pop, right? There's going to be a pop, of course. You always have the buy the rumor, sell the news. There's always a pop on the news, but then days after, weeks after, the price usually starts dropping. This will be interesting because it comes in connoissance with, in, in connoissance, that's the word, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> together, together with uh, the Bitcoin halving that's going to be upon us in April, right? So it's going to be two things that are happening. And it, they, according to what uh, people have said, it's going to take them a few weeks bef between uh, six to eight, four to eight weeks, could be six weeks, could be eight weeks uh, for them to get the actual funds up. Right. And then we'll see what happens from there. Now, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Right. So th it's there's a, there's many uh, sides to this. On the one hand, Let's talk about the good first. The good is this gives major exposure to Bitcoin, right, uh, and to the crypto market. In in, in uh, because when money flows into Bitcoin, it has a tendency to cycle out to the rest of the cryptocurrency market after. So that's good because we're going to have a lot of exposure, new people, a lot of institutions that were sitting on the sidelines. We'll see BlackRock, Fidelity, and others coming into the 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 crypto market. They're going to be like, okay, you know what? We're going to come into, right? And either they'll go through BlackRock or Fidelity or someone else. Also, regular Joe Schmo that maybe was afraid to buy Bitcoin or buy crypto on an exchange because of what happened with FTX and, you know, and you need a new account and not everybody has the, the capacity to have 10 trading accounts, right? <laughs> um, and you have to do KYC in, some, in, in many instances. So they're like, I don't know. I want my stock portfolio and that's it. Right. So now they have an opportunity. You have an opportunity for the older generation uh, to also invest until now. They could only do uh, crypto miners or GBTC, which was on the Canadian stock exchange. You didn't really have, you know, uh, that possibility for a spot Bitcoin ETF. So that's the good. Right. So the good is that new money is going to come in and potentially is going to send the prices of crypto up long term. Right. This might be bad. Right. There's, of course, many people see BlackRock as evil they tip their toes in everything so they're also in some bad businesses that you know aren't good for the world um and they also have their toes in many other you know they have like i think it was 75 percent of all companies in the s p 500 were either owned by a percent high percentage was either run by blackrock and vanguard something like that crazy numbers um so they own a lot of you know the companies in the s p 500 which is the strongest companies in the us the 500 strongest companies um and once you have big money in, it's not, you know, obscure anymore, right? It was a lot easier when things were obscure to make a lot of money because things would skyrocket. There wasn't a lot of liquidity. And then if buying started happening, prices started skyrocketing. Now, when you have the big dogs, big dogs have a tendency to manipulate things uh, and, and more than we're already seeing it being manipulated now. So that could be a downside. Also, I think that once we get in more uh, level-headed traders and we get more uh, money, you could call it old money, into the crypto market, they're not going to be YOLOing, they're not going to be working on emotions, there's going to be people there that are seasoned traders, seasoned investors, and they're not going to do crazy things, and they're bringing in the billions and trillions of dollars, right? So their money could overscale the retail trader money. Right. And then they would have a lot more power in the crypto market where now, yes, whales have, um, you know, an effect. They have power, but it's still, for the most part, retail investors. Right. Even if they're whales, <laughs> they're still retail. They're not an institution. Uh, and I think that once institutions come in, it will be a little bit downside. So this might be a, this next bull run could be the last time we see 20x, 30x, 40x for big uh, you know, billion dollar cryptos. The next four year cycle, there could be gains, 
but not just at the same capacity on the upper end. Of course, the lower end, the meme coins and all that, that that's always going to be, right? But I'm talking about the upper end, the upper 50, right? The 50 largest market caps. I don't think that's going to happen after this uh, because I think that the whole the whole landscape will change, although we're still in the infancy. We're not past the grandpa tests, right? The grandpa test is if your grandpa, your old grandpa, 85-year-old grandpa uh, can buy crypto, and he knows what crypto is and he understands it. Same thing like the internet, right? Until the grand, the, the, the gener people that were that age didn't understand, it, it didn't catch on. Once they started understanding it and became easier for them, then it started really catching on. It wasn't something for like the younger generation. Once crypto gets to that uh, zone, I think it's going to be mainstream and then, you know, we'll, we'll go up significantly. But we're, we're not there yet. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Don't forget to smash the like button. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. And like I always say, let's make a lot of money.